Dr. Larry Burchette, an emergency physician and host of the video podcast, Life Can Change in a Moment and Hasn't It. Uh, Dr. Burchette, thank you. Uh, have you started to see a spike in hospital visits? You know, in the, the places that I work in California are a little bit more rural than, say, San Francisco General or, or Highland in Oakland. We're seeing people come in certainly with concerns and questions, wanting to get tested. There are definitely some cases that we're highly suspicious about. I say suspicious because a lot of these tests are still pending. We don't even in the hospital have fast turnaround on these tests, mm -hmm. which has been a problem. But yes, to answer your question, we're seeing more and more of this. Do you, um, we're, we're told there should be a, a noticeable spike within the next week or so. Do you believe that to be true? I think it's gonna depend on location. Uh, I think in Manhattan, in New York City, which is becoming the epicenter of this in the United States, yes, their numbers have gone up and will continue to do so. A little more rural place in California, for example, may take time for the virus to get there. And when it does, I don't think it may be as uh, dangerous or, or as big of a spike as you're going to see in bigger cities. OK, we're, we're, we're looking for any rays of hope, any good information. So, all right, let's get to our first question. Uh, somebody texting in, I'm undergoing chemo, very vulnerable to the disease, coronavirus. Should I continue visiting the center to get my chemo and doctor appointments? Absolutely. Um, I mean, with everything, it's risk and benefit. You know, I don't know at what stage that chemotherapy is, if it's a very early treatable with a good prognosis, or if it's near the end and chemotherapy is not helping very much. Um, but in general, I would advise people when, you know, you especially when you need a doctor and you need appointments, chemotherapy, things that are essential for your life, it's worth the risk, yes, to go into offices and get your care. You know, don't forget everybody throughout the entire system from the ER that I work in to an oncology office, they're going to be taking preparations to maximize your safety, you know. Um, spreading out waiting rooms, making sure people aren't sick when they're in there. A lot of people are, are waiting in their cars in between appointments instead of waiting in a waiting room. So I would reassure her that him or her that this is a different situation today than it was even two weeks ago or a month ago in terms of what we're trying to do to protect patients that still need the system. It's not like everybody can wait at home. I mean, we have sick people right. that still need care even amidst corona today. How easily is it transmitted? We know from the cough, from uh, droplets from a cough or contact with another human being. But what about like your newspaper delivery? I mean, let's say you have just washed your hands, Dr. Larry, and then you pick up a newspaper. Could you get it that way? Theoretically, but but these are these are not thought to be kind of the main ways that this thing is transmitted. Let me give you some uh, numbers from Asia that they were using over there. We've been saying six feet of close contact. And in Singapore and some of those countries that have done well with preventing this, they used 15 to 30 minutes of close contact within six feet. So just kind of passing somebody mm -hmm. is not really considered a high risk unless somebody were to sneeze on you or like right. cough directly in your face. Um, these things like, well, you know, if I'm working at a grocery store and I'm touching food and, and a newspaper and so forth, the risk isn't zero. You certainly want to wash your hands, especially, you know, before you eat anything that can when you're bringing your hands into a portal of entry of your mouth or nose or eyes. Absolutely. But I, those aren't as high risk as, um, you know, right. French kissing somebody who's got coronavirus. Okay, well, that's that's one way of approaching it. <laughs> it's one way of describing it. <laughs> okay, uh, how vulnerable are pregnant women and developing babies to coronavirus? We don't know mm. is the answer to that. We don't know. Um, pregnancy, you know, you think about the kind of studies that are done on pregnancy. It takes nine, ten months for a baby to develop in in the uterus. And then... You don't know for years afterwards what kind of things affect development. Right. Um, the studies and stuff that I've seen now, there hasn't been a lot of documented transmission. If a mom gets sick, it going to the baby. 
Um, when the baby is born, I think there have been cases, but in general, it doesn't look bad. But, but really, it's so early to say. It's, it's, I don't know that we can say much now. Um, we had a question yesterday, which was pretty good, uh, about COVID-19 being airborne. And, and you mentioned, obviously, if somebody sneezes or coughs on you, uh, that's an airborne way of getting it. Is there any other way people should be concerned about this? In what, what do you mean in, in any other way? In, in terms of, uh, let's say, an air conditioning unit. Let's say uh, somebody is running by your home, they cough, could it come in through your open window, anything like that? No, I, I it, you know, again, like the main, they're, they're, all these other things are theoretical, and the answer is I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the main way that this thing is thought to be transmitted again is respiratory droplets, coughing, sneezing, and close contact. You know, theoretically, could this other stuff, or I live in an apartment building, and is the air recirculated right. and all of this stuff? You know, a lot of times when I hear patients kind of worrying to this degree, you do what you can, right? right? Mm -hmm. You know, you wash your hands, you take the appropriate precautions, you're staying home, that kind of stuff. And then there's just some things that are outside our control. And so kind of learning to um, focus on what you can do and then let the rest of it go.